Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Rina and in today's video I want to give you tips about how to customize Clip Studio Paint brushes so you can draw more comfortably on this software, which by the way is sponsoring today's video as well. Thank you very much to all the people working behind this great program for giving me the chance to create more tutorials for all my viewers and help fellow artists. Some of you may already know that a while ago I released a pack of my main brushes which you can find on Gumroad. There will be a link to it in the description box. But I thought that I would make a side video about it because I know by experience that Clip Studio Paint settings can be quite overwhelming when it comes to customizing brushes. It has taken me a lot of effort and patience to be able to work comfortably on this program, so I thought that I would share some of the things I have learned all these months, so I can help anyone who's having a hard time understanding how this works too. So if you want to know how to get Clip Studio Paint brushes to act exactly how you want them to, grab a seat and open your ears. Before I move on to the real explanations though, make sure to subscribe and enable notifications for my channel by clicking on the bell icon. This way you won't miss out on any new stuff. So as long as YouTube wants to work properly, that is. Also, please consider checking my Patreon page for earlier access to all my videos and tutorials, along with a lot more exclusive content every month. Now let's get to the point! Quick notice that as my Clip Studio is in Spanish, some of the English names I'll mention might not be the exact ones, but I hope that you'll be able to follow the tutorial along without much trouble. Ok, we can start this two different ways, by editing an already existing brush or creating a new one. Either way works, so go for whatever seems easier for you. To create a new brush, just click on whatever icon from the tool panel. Now move onto the subtool panel. If this one isn't showing up on your screen, you can enable it by going to Window and Subtool. Click on the three lines icon, then choose Add from default. The brushes are organized in different groups, ink, pencil, airbrush, Click on one of them to open the full list of brushes under that specific type, and choose the one you'd like to create. For this example, I'll go with a G pen, under the ink group. If at some point you feel like you have messed up the brush, you don't need to create it from scratch again. Just click on this... Uh, timer button... <laughs> I don't know what this is, honestly. <laughs> and it will revert to the default setting. Now let's see what we can do to adjust this so it fits our drawing techniques. But before that, let's give it a new name that's easier to find. Right click on the brush and then Settings of Subtool. I'm going to name it Experiment. <laughs> but you better give it a cooler name. We can also change the icon on this list and even the color. As you see on the Tool Property panel, which you can enable from the window menu like we did earlier, if it's not showing up, we can adjust some of the settings here. But what you see here is not everything there is. Click on the tiny wrench icon at the bottom. If it's not showing up, go to the three lines icon and check Show Command Bar. Here's where the real adventure begins. As you see on the left column, there are a bunch of different categories of things we can edit. And each one of these has a lot more settings inside. It's really scary at first and sometimes the differences between all these options are hard to understand. So for today I'm going to focus only on the things we can do to change the overall feel of the brush and adjust it to your drawing technique. And maybe some other day I can talk about the rest. Let's start with the brush size menu. 
Obviously, this slider allows you to change the size of your brush, but that's not what I want you to focus on. Let's click on this tiny square on the side to open the brush size dynamics. Here, you can modify how your brush reacts to your pen in four different ways. Pen pressure, tilt, velocity, and random. Pen pressure will be in charge of controlling your brush size depending on the pressure you use when you're drawing. When the minimum value for pen pressure is set to zero, it means that the pen brush will have a minimum size of zero pixels at the lowest pressure, so you'll be able to make very, very thin lines if you barely press on the tablet. Setting it to a higher value means that the difference in the stroke won't be as noticeable, even if you're pressing very, very lightly, as the minimum size available now is a bigger number. This may look counterproductive at first, but it's very handy to recreate certain traditional tools like markers or brushes. On this box, you can further adjust how this brush reacts to your pressure. This option depends a lot on your pen's capabilities. Although nowadays most graphic tablets and interactive monitors have rather decent sensitivity, so you shouldn't have any problem with this. The horizontal axis, as you see, indicates the level of pressure you apply onto the tablet, and the vertical axis represents the size of the brush that will appear. Now this took me a lot of time to understand, but it's actually very easy, especially if we accompany it with practical examples. I can basically tell the program that every time I apply very little pressure, I want the size of the brush to be rather big, for example. And the same way, I can also set it so that every time I press super hard with the pen, the size of the brush comes out as minimal as possible. So with these current settings, when I press light, my strokes will come out very thick. And when I press hard, the lines will become super, super thin. What is this sorcery? <laughs> we all have different drawing techniques, so I cannot tell you how you should set this grid. You'll have to play around with it to see what fits you best. The good thing is that you can set this differently for every brush, instead of having to change the pressure settings through your tablet's drivers. The tilt function allows you to control the size of your brush depending on the angle you hold your pen at. This doesn't work for all devices as some pens don't have tilt recognition yet. It works very much the same way as the pen pressure we saw earlier. You can set the minimum and maximum values on this slider and also adjust it farther on the grid. Now, just like we did earlier, we can tell the program that whenever we put the pen vertically, we want the lines to come out rather thin. And when holding it flat against the tablet, for the lines to be bigger. It is worth looking into it and testing it if you're interested in recreating the feel of traditional pencils. Enabling velocity will allow you to control the size of your brush depending on how fast you make the strokes. The faster you make the strokes, the thinner the line will become. Sometimes they will even disappear. And the slower you move your pen, the thicker they will be. Again, you can limit the lowest value with the corresponding slider. This might be a good way to recreate wet traditional brushes like ink and some types of paint. Lastly, random changes the size randomly. <laughs> Duh! <laughs> it basically adds some sort of bumpy, irregular effect that can be very interesting to recreate textures. Change the minimum value on the slider to make it more or less noticeable. You don't have to enable only one of these, by the way. They can all be combined at the same time to recreate different effects. On to the ink section now. 
Opacity controls how transparent your brush is. It is not the same as brush density, which I'll explain later on. Just like earlier, you can click on the small square on the side to open the Dynamics window and further adjust what controls the opacity of the brush. Blending mode is just the same as layer modes, but it affects the way your brush reacts to its own strokes. If we set it to multiply, for example, each stroke will add up onto the other, turning the color darker every time. If we set it to screen, it lightens up the colors. I can't explain them all because there are so many, but feel free to play around with this option. I personally find it very hard to control, but who knows, maybe it's exactly what you need to feel comfortable when drawing on Clip Studio. Now let's see the color mixing setting. There are two modes, blending and running color. As their name suggests, blending is more helpful to blend colors. Running color basically just moves the colors around, but it doesn't mix them. Depending on what you choose, the settings below will behave a different way. Let's go for the blending option, as I feel it's the most helpful in this case. Amount of paint and paint density are similar, but work slightly different. The former controls how much of the color will be visible when you make a stroke on top of a different color. A low amount will result in the original color fading away slowly as it moves over the other, or to take its time to revert back to the original color, if that makes sense. A high amount will keep the color strong and it will barely mix with the one below. Paint density, instead, refers to the opacity of the paint, as in allowing the paint to have more or less pigment from the start. Again, just play with the values to find wherever suits you best. Color stretch is pretty easy to understand. A low value will drag out the color for a very short moment. while a high value will result in the stroke needing more time to recover its original color. Intensity of blur will only be available if you chose the running color option earlier. You can set it to automatic or fixed value, and as the name suggests, it controls the intensity of the blur when the colors are overlapped. Remember that you can always adjust all these options with the Dynamics pop-up on the tiny square on the side of the sliders. The next one on the list is Color Variation. It's a very strange setting, in my opinion, but it can be helpful for some artists. Basically, you can make your brush change colors during the same stroke, or for every stroke you make. You can adjust the hue, saturation and luminescence of set color changes. Anti-aliasing. This controls how hard or soft your brush is, or in simpler words, how sharp and pixelated the edges are. We're jumping towards brush tip now. The default tip shape is a circle, but you can change it by clicking on material and then add new brush tip. Choose wherever you prefer from the materials list and BAM! Your brush tip is no longer a circle. You can even add several of them to combine them and create a very interesting shape.
Hardness, of course, refers to how blurry the edges of your brush will be. Thickness and angle go hand in hand and they allow you to control the width of the tip of the brush as well as the position slash angle of it. This is a lot easier to understand by testing it rather than with words. So I'm sorry I can't give you a better explanation. But I find this very useful to recreate calligraphy brushes. The flip options will only be available if you are using a custom tip and they basically allow you to change the orientation of set shape. Density of the brush. This is one of the key aspects for me when it comes to customizing brushes. Remember when we were talking about the opacity of the brush at the beginning? These two may seem similar at first, but they work in very different ways. While opacity makes your brush more or less transparent, brush density makes your brush less dense. Like when you're using traditional tools and you dilute the paint with a bit of water. Now I know this gibberish probably made no sense to you, so let me show you the difference between the two concepts in action. When I have the opacity set low, it doesn't matter how many times I go over what I am painting. Unless I lift my pen from the tablet and start a new stroke, the color will not become darker. If I lower the density of the brush instead, I can build up the color little by little every time that I go over what I have already painted, with no need to make several strokes. This is very handy, especially when you're using the brush as an eraser with a transparent color option. A low opacity will only erase part of the paint, and you will have to make several strokes if you want to delete everything. But a low brush density will allow you to erase everything gradually instead. I totally prefer using brush density instead of opacity as I feel it allows me to have more control over gradients and how colors mix. Moving to the stroke menu now. Interval or gap refers to the space between the repetition of the brush tip. This sounds awful, so I can show you more than I can tell you. <laughs> this is most noticeable when the brush density is set to low, by the way. If the gap value is very high, the tips will be more separated. If the value is low, there's less space between them, and so it's more difficult to tell them apart. You can adjust this by setting your preferred fixed value on the left icon or choose one of the others. Texture. This is very much self-explanatory. Just like earlier with the tip shape, here you can select a texture for the brush and decide its density, scale, brightness, etc. As well as the blending mode of said texture. Watercolor Edge. Again, this is very easy to understand. This option will recreate an extra edge that replicates traditional watercolor brushes. You can adjust the width of the edge, opacity, darkness. You can even set it to appear only after you have made the stroke and how blurry the final result is.
<sighs> Are you still alive on the other side of the screen? <laughs> I hope so. We're almost done, don't worry. Let's check the correction menu. Make corner pointed. As the name suggests, we'll make the corners of your strokes more pointed. Stabilization will be one of your best friends in this program, as it will help you make your lines more stable, especially when you do slow strokes. The higher the value, the slower and more stable your strokes will come out. If your stabilization is set to a low value, you can also try to check the Adjust by Speed option and choose one of these icons if you'd rather let the program help you to stabilize fast strokes or slow strokes. Post correction could be considered another type of stabilization, but this one takes effect only after you've made the strokes. And once again, you can let the program control set correction based on the speed of your strokes, how zoomed in you are to the canvas, and using Bezier curves, which is something rather complicated for me to explain here, sorry. <laughs> Brush stroke. It might be hard to appreciate in the video, but this basically extends the end of your stroke even after the pen is no longer touching the tablet. It's sort of like an extra tip or extra length. Okay, last section! Starting and ending. Here you can change how the start and end of each stroke feels. And I don't mean just the thickness, but the density, opacity, texture, gap, saturation, pretty much everything we've covered during the video. I find it most helpful to adjust the size of the tips of the stroke. You can set it to a specific length, by percentage or fade. In this case, a low value on the starting bar will keep the beginning of your stroke rather round or whatever shape you chose for your brush, while a higher value will make it more pointy. And like I said, you can choose to adjust anything and everything else, not just the brush size. For example, if you always want your strokes to start rather soft, you could pick brush density on the Dynamics pop-up and set the starting value to a higher number. Take your time and play around with this. You are the only one who knows how you want the brush to perform. And... This would be very much it. Gosh, I'm exhausted! <laughs> Overall, for me, the key aspects to adjust any brush are anti-aliasing, pen tip, especially the tip shape, and density of the brush. Then also the stroke gap, correction slash stabilization, and starting and ending. I know it's a lot of explanations and a lot of information to take, but I really want to encourage you all to spend a bit of your time getting familiar with all these settings and understanding how they work by testing them all, which will probably make a lot more sense than my explanations. It takes a bit of work, but it's worth the effort, so you can have brushes that feel more comfortable and work in the exact way that you need. Once you adjust the brush to your liking, you may want to right-click on it and then choose Save Current Settings as Default. Just in case someday you change the settings too much while experimenting or by accident and are too lazy to fix every little aspect again. By saving the current settings as default, you'll be able to revert to them with just one click on the Timer icon. 
and if you really have no patience at all to customize brushes and play around with complicated settings, I won't blame you because I have been in that spot too. <laughs> You can always support other artists by downloading or purchasing their brushes. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I released some of mine weeks ago. If you're interested in them, you'll find a direct link to the pack in the description box. I'd suggest that once you find a brush you somewhat like, duplicate it and keep adjusting it with the things you learned here today, rather than creating one from scratch. It is a great way to save time. Oh, one last thing before I go. Many of the settings we've seen in the video today often won't appear in the Tool Property panel by default. Once you get familiar with the settings and find which are the ones that you change most often, simply hide or unhide them with the eye icon on the left. This way, you won't have to constantly open and close the subtle detail panel if you need to adjust things. And that's it for today! I hope that this video was useful for you guys. Remember that you can have earlier access to all my videos, tutorials and art if you support me on Patreon. You can also get a lot more exclusive content that I don't post anywhere else. So make sure to check it out and consider supporting me there or sharing my page with your friends. Now to keep practicing and improving, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye bye! Gosh, I need water!